Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello everyone, uh, we will continue our lecture series on this uh, optimal control guidance and estimation course. We have finished uh, 6 lectures already and we have also already gave some, some overview of uh, calculus of variation in scalar, uh, I mean scalar variables. What I am going to do here in this particular lecture is to review that briefly uh, what we discussed in the last class followed by its extensions to vector, uh, I mean vector concepts and all that multidimensional things which is very similar to scalars anyway. So, first thing is the summary of what we discussed in the last lecture, uh, the calculus of variations for scalar problems especially. So, this is the concept that we discussed, uh, we discussed something like uh, on one side there is a function and its increment and the other side is a functional and its increment and both uh, appear to be quite uh, similar provided the x axis turns out to be like uh, in this particular case it is free variable time, but whereas in this it is a x of t basically. So, it is you can interpret it something like a function of function sort of thing that is that is how where the, this the, this delta x can be a variation with respect to time ok. Then if it varies with respect to time then how this j varies ok that is ultimately the impl implication basically. Then we discussed many things uh, about uh, in increment of a function is this uh, this delta f approximated as the df. Similarly, increment is delta j approximated as del j. Okay, slight notational change this is d f versus it is delta j sort of thing. So, just to make sure that uh, this is variations. Then we discussed about uh, differential of a function and variation of a functional things like that and we carried out this algebra and uh, using this Taylor series we landed up this kind of expression for delta f and then it turns out that when delta t goes to 0 and we land up with something like d f. Okay. So, in general you can tell d f is uh, something like f dot in delta t in general basically. So, a very similar concept you can do this way also here and you can take first variation, second variation things like that where first variation is uh, can be computed this way. And as I told last class uh, uh, if somebody does not tell uh, the by default variation means first variation can be computed this way. We also gave examples how to compute uh, and things like that in the last class actually. You know. So, then coming to the boundary condition we discussed two class of boundary condition and the fixed endpoint problems uh, and free endpoint problems. Uh, fixed endpoint problem can be kind of fixed uh, both in time and state or time in the free variable uh, sorry this uh, time is the free variable and x is the dependent variable. So, it can be fixed both sense t 0 at t 0 x can be fixed at t f x can x can also be fixed or it can also be something like uh, free endpoint problem where the endpoint can be completely free or it can it can be required to lie on a specific curve. And I gave you an example of satellite launch and all that. When the when you launch a satellite, doesn't matter where you join the orbit, but from there onwards it will keep on uh, staying in the orbit anyway. So all that it matters is just to leave it somewhere in the orbit on orbital conditions actually. So that, that's that's how these problems are defined that way. All right. So then optimum of a functional we also discussed, and we had this uh, formal definition that uh, a functional is said to have a relative optimum at x star of t remember it is not a not a particular point, but x star itself is a function of time. So, it is a functionally said to have a relative optimum at x star of t if the if there exists some epsilon is greater than 0 such that the function I mean this x of t will satisfy this kind of a condition ok. Whenever it satisfies this then you have this uh, increment of j should have the same sign. That means, if you are talking about a minimum then uh, this delta j, j of x minus j of x star should always be positive no matter what kind of variation you talk about. If you know, whatever variation you have ok either uh, up or down or whatever it is actually ok irrespective whatever variation you have delta j will keep on getting positive. That means, j of x star is supposed to have a local minimum and similarly, if delta j is less than 0 then j of x star is supposed to have a local maximum actually ok. And obviously, if the relationships are satisfied arbitrarily large value for uh, I mean it is satisfied for arbitrarily large value of epsilon then j of x star is said to have a global optimum actually. 
and we also discuss about this variation concept and all if x star happens to be an optimum path then all that you are talking about is is a neighborhood path of that actually. So, whatever whatever neighbors you are getting that kind of that kind of a thing we are we are talking about actually ok. So, for then we discussed about some fundamental theorem of calculus of variation and uh, it turns out that for x star of t to be a candidate optimum the following condition has to hold good that means, the first variation has to be 0 for all admissible delta x. See this delta x turns out to be the difference between these two actually. So, for all admissible delta x your uh, delta j has to be equal to 0 that happens to be a necessary condition and a sufficiency condition happens to be second variation should be greater than 0 for a minimum or second variation should be less than 0 for a maximum. And when it uh, I mean this concept are kind of you can think about very parallel to the static optimization, but uh, the ideas of calculus of variations rather. We also discussed this uh, nice beautiful little fundamental lemma ok and it was told that if for every continuous function g of t this equation is satisfied this this uh, this integral equation is satisfied ok where the variation delta x is continuous in t ok then the con I mean it, uh, the only condition that is required is delta x has to be continuous that is all okay. then it turns out that g of s g of t has to be 0 in the entire interval ok. So, that is uh, that is a nice property and then many many times we will use it also actually okay. and this this was a very simple proof also we took at the interval and then in that interval we took the function everywhere 0, but in that interval it is not 0 and we can always construct a delta x uh, which is again non 0 in that particular interval and then this integral happens to be non 0 ok. If you if you do that then this account I mean that is a kind of uh, I mean uh, counter argument sort of thing. So, uh, so, taking help of that we could show that it's, it cannot happen. So, with that proof by contradiction and all that. So, then we landed up with the conclusion that uh, g of t has to be 0. It's, it looks a very simple theorem, but there is a lot of uh, great implications later. Then about conditions of uh, optimality, uh, the we define the problem that uh, we have to optimize this kind of a function. Okay, where t0 and tf both are fixed and all that you have to do is to make sure that the first variation is 0. And after some algebra the, that uh, I mean using this partial fraction of uh, I mean par partial fraction of this integral and all that we could able to show that it, it ultimately leads to these two conditions uh, when the first condition is called uh, EL equation or Euler Lagrange equation okay, and the second one is the uh, transversality condition which leads to this boundary condition sort of thing. Yeah. And we also noted that part of this equation might be already satisfied uh, by problem formulation. In other words, if your x 0 is fixed it is not uh, free then the d x naught is already 0. So, this condition is already satisfied actually. So, whatever is not satisfied you have to you can extract from there and whatever is satisfied is already satisfied anyway ok. So, remember this equation is valid for the entire path from t naught to t f whereas these conditions are valid for t0 and tf only basically. Yeah. So, this is a differential equation for this will give a corresponding differential equation and this will give a uh, corresponding boundary condition sort of thing. So, using this two we are supposed to solve the uh, optimal I mean dynamic optimization problem basically. So, now this uh, quickly this proof that that followed is something like this uh, it has this delta l we took it and delta l is by definition like this and we expanded using Taylor series ok this is the first term say first term in derivative and then higher terms and then if you take in the limit delta L will become delta L this delta L and then that turns out to be like that. So, this delta J can be approximated something like this ok and then this uh, this this particular part I mean this second part of the integral you can uh, you can uh, end up uh, in integrate by parts ok. Okay, so then do this uh, I mean algebra, and then end up with this uh, this kind of a conclusion. This this part being like that, and then you can put it back here, and then ultimately it leads to that. So okay. So if this has to be zero, then this has to be zero, and that has to be zero, and that is how we got this these two conditions of optimality that I just talked actually. Okay. So the same trick will hold good for vector algebra also. That's why I thought of uh, kind of revising it uh, again. So, this ultimately leads to these two conditions and condition 1 must be satisfied regardless of the boundary condition or end condition 
but uh, second part of the equation that means this uh, this equation may already be satisfied by the problem specification okay so the, the amount of extra information contained by this equation varies with the boundary condition specified actually so that means uh, depending on the specified boundary condition you have to extract additional information from this condition in general we okay, this was uh, uh, in a restrictive sense uh, we try to expand that and then in general we landed up with the, the, this kind of thing yeah, i mean this uh, general transversality condition sort of thing when t uh, this uh, variation of t was also allowed in other words variation of the initial time and final time that was allowed actually okay, where where you start where you stop is up to up, up to the designer also so in a way so some sometimes the problem uh, when you start and when you stop okay that can be free also in a way so if you if you bring that into account then this leads to something like this and then we discussed about various special cases case 1 case 2 i think up to case 5 under some very different different conditions that means if both the end point uh, are fixed that means uh, both time and x not at t0 and tf are all fixed then this doesn't obviously give any any additional information because every every delta x0 delta xf delta t0 delta tf everything goes to zero But if T not and T F are fixed, but uh, X not and X F are not fixed, then uh, obviously this part goes to zero. Delta T F and delta T not both are zero, so we we'll end up with only this part of the equation. Similarly, if T not and X not are fixed, okay, that means uh, T F and X F both are free. Then you can consider only the T F part of the equation, and then you end up with something like this. Okay? And similarly, if uh, depending on what is fixed and what is free, we we kind of uh, take the other part into account. Because, because whatever is given, if it satisfies some part of the equation automatically, we consider that is, a, I mean, a taken sort of thing. Okay. So this is how uh, we extract this uh, information contained from transversality condition. Okay. Ultimately, the the key idea here is the number of differential equations and no end number of uh, end conditions should be same. Okay. and then it depends on how many free variables are there with us and how many extra information is can be derived from this 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 equation actually so depending on an example and all we'll talk later it will be more and more clear how to how to use it actually okay so the very special case at the end uh, when t not and x not is fixed and uh, tf and xf are uh, constrained to lie on a given curve then you have to go back to that because it is fixed anyway so this t not x not doesn't give any any extra information but tf xf we cannot take that as zero okay this this part of it delta xf and delta tf cannot be zero but they are supposed to satisfy a certain constraint equation okay so this constraint equation can be derived something like this okay because xf has is a function of eta ta okay so from that delta xf is nothing but that so we can substitute that and then Then end up with this, and where delta T F is uh, not really zero because it is this is constrained to lie on a given curve. That means your final time is kind of free actually. Okay. So if that is not zero, the coefficient has to be zero, and that that's how we end up with this additional equation, okay, which will be which is needed for this kind of a problem definition actually. Then we also discussed a little bit on uh, second variation, and the second variation we expanded the second term of the Taylor series and. and then let up i mean kind of uh, observe that this lens of i mean this gives us this uh, hessian matrix sort of ideas and then we uh, define this uh, this pi weak pi okay as that matrix evaluated at the optimum point and if happens to be a pdf matrix then it's a minimum and if happens to be an, a negative de negative definite matrix it happens to be maximum actually okay so first what you have to do in a given problem is to evaluate this matrix pi first and then evaluate whether the the pi is a positive definite matrix or not actually or negative definite matrix okay if neither of the above then further math is obviously required and uh, like uh, static optimization if you remember we have this uh, third term fourth term and things like that and obviously those things are beyond this uh, beyond the scope of this course actually and also remember unlike static optimization in this particular thing x star and x star dot both are time dependent they are not really a specific point value Okay, so they are x star is a is a optimal solution which is a function of time. Basically, that's a path trajectory that we are looking for. So this uh, x what you evaluate here pi is not really a constant matrix, but it's a function of time. Okay, so when you talk about uh, uh, whether this matrix is positive or negative, it should remain positive or negative for all time actually. Okay, 
So, for in the entire interval this matrix should turns out to be a positive definite matrix that means one easy way of doing that is just uh, evaluate the Eigen values uh, kind of uh, symbolically as a function of time and then plot it in this interval actually if they all remain positive okay, then you have done sort of thing. Also remember as a, as a last comment that this test that we are so, so that is we are just talking about is valid only for free optimization problem. The moment you bring in some sort of a state equation constraint or any other algebraic constraint uh, things like that then if the constraint is active then obviously this condition does not hold actually. Yeah. All right, so this is what we discussed in the in the last class. How about extending some of these concepts for the vector problem? Okay, because that is where we are uh, our main interest will lie. Because all of our state variables are typically of n dimension control, is m dimension, things like that actually. Uh, so, what I mean the consider uh, the same problem but in multiple dimension, and to begin with, uh, we consider the problem without any constraint actually. Yeah. So, just an uh, I mean what you see here is very similar concepts the only difference will be the small x will be replaced by capital X now, where this capital X contains n I mean I mean n components uh, x 1, x 2 up to x n actually yeah. and obviously again the similar sort of ideas we will take T 0 and T f both are fixed and our objective is to make sure that delta j goes to 0 for arbitrary delta x actually. Yeah. So, again the similar algebra it will uh, we will do that uh, in a second, but uh, in the using the similar algebra it will end up uh, very very similar looking equation, but remember these two equations now are not exactly same as what you have seen before, especially this particular equation contains n equations really del, del, del L by del x 1 minus d by d t del L by del x 1 dot equal to 0 then you can substitute by x 2 x 3 like that. So, it really contains about n equations actually. All right, and here uh, transpose is also a must because this itself is a vector and that is also a vector. So, what you are talking here is very closely what we have done in scalar problem, but not exactly one to one sort of thing. And proof also will uh, this part of this particular condition derivation proof will also be very very close, but just be careful about your algebra that is all actually right. because vector matrix algebra is not very similar to scalar algebra that is the only thing actually. So, what you are looking for is uh, delta j okay, the has to go to 0 and delta j is something like this and obviously, the second term again is a problem. So, we expand we try to kind of simplify the second problem and second problem we this delta x dot is nothing but d by d t for delta x by definition and now we integrate by parts and then we just tell okay, this is the first term this is the second term. So, we will keep that as first term into integration of the second term which is delta x minus and differential of the first term okay, times this one. Okay. All right, uh, so, this is uh, this is how it is uh, think most perhaps this is like this okay, I think one term is missing there probably maybe this is a, a transpose here. Right. <coughs> okay, so, just note that transpose I mean there is a because this again this is a vector matrix algebra. So, this has to be uh, this has to be noted actually because you just cannot do cannot afford to lose this transpose and all that actually okay, because if this is a vector and that is a vector ultimately multiplication is to be scalar actually ok. All right, so, this is uh, how it is and then uh, we carry on with this this same thing I mean we this 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 term landed up with something like this this leads to that. So, we take this term and substitute it back okay, in this this expression and then see that uh, this these two terms and then substitute that and then land up with something like this actually okay. exactly same just that you this transpose cannot be omitted and then see left uh, left cannot go to right things like that actually the multiplication order has to be maintained transpose has to be in place things like that that way. Okay. So, okay. Yeah, there is one more transpose missing looks like. So, let me correct that this is where I think probably here ok. Anyway, so this is how algebra proceeds ok and then same thing that it goes to 0. So, obviously, this coefficient has to go to 0. So, this first term will give us this EL equation and the second term will give us the transversality or boundary condition basically. Okay. 
So, in any given problem, you are, you are our, it, it is our duty to satisfy both the conditions and uh, carry out the necessary algebra, which will, which will make sure that the, these conditions are satisfied. And again, the uh, extending the transversal eddy condition, we can go for this uh, similar ideas del L by del x transpose delta x and things like that. And special case is very similar to the scalar cases. And remember, these, these are the cases that I am talking actually. Okay. The, these are the cases that I am talking. That means either fixed endpoint or, uh, or partly fixed, or the T naught and T f both are fixed, or uh, the, the states are free, uh, like that. Actually, that's that kind of conditions we are talking here. And everything will will be very very parallel to what you have discussed there. Just that you have to be slightly careful about your algebra. Actually. Okay. All right. So this is uh, this is the condition that is there. Now, okay, that is all about free optimization, which is very parallel to the scalar case. Now, how about uh, constraint optimization? Okay, that is more uh, important because many of our problems will invariably have an equality constraint in the form of state equation later. So, we we are more interested with this uh, this constraint of various null problems uh, and that too with multiple dimensions. Now, how does it go? Again, it is very close to this static optimization sort of concepts here. So, what you are looking for the problem is to optimize this cost function okay, or rather the cost functional j okay, which is which can be a nonlinear function okay, some meaningful nonlinear function containing both x x dot as well as time okay. and it is subject to this uh, this equality constraint and if you notice a little bit carefully and uh, suppose x is just really the state of the problem state vector of the problem then this con this constraint is nothing but state equation sort of thing. Okay, because normally we have x dot equal to okay, normally we have something like x dot equal to f of x x u sort of thing or whatever you can take that out for a second okay, and then tell okay that is how it is uh, my let us say x is I mean u is we are not talking right now. So, let us not talk about that. So, we talk uh, like this. So, then I can consider that as x dot minus f of x equal to 0. Okay, so, this is nothing but my phi what you are talking okay this is phi of x and x dot okay so this uh, all right so what you are talking here is some optimization of a cost functional subject to an equality constraint in the form of uh, algebraic equation or in the form of state equation really as of can be a function of both x and x dot actually okay and remember this dimension of this uh, this constraint need not be same as the dimension of the state it can be very different n and l tilde n tilde can be very different actually okay but typically when you talk about a state equation then obviously both equations are same so, uh, so the equation n tilde and n will be same actually in most of the cases okay anyway so uh, coming back to this we are interested in uh, in optimizing this uh, cost functional subject to this equality constraint now, how do you do that? Okay. Then I go back to this uh, Lagrange's existing theorem, and this existing theorem tells us that the this constraint optimization problem, okay, what you are looking at. The, see what it tells is that there exists a, I mean, this uh, same dimensional co-state vector now, okay, lambda is a function of time again, very very close to x actually, whatever meaning is that, same dimension as x rather, okay. Uh, same dimension as this constraint n tilde rather. Okay. So, what it tells? It tells there exists the a, a variable called lambda of t okay. Say of same dimension as the number of constraint. Okay. So, that if you construct this j bar okay, this way and try to optimize it as, as if it is a free optimization problem, then it is equivalent to solving this problem basically that is all it tells. Okay. So, you know, there exists a lambda of t such that the above constraint optimization problem leads to the same solution as the following constraint cost function on constraint cost function. Okay. So, all that you have to do is construct this j bar okay, and then treat as if it is a free optimization problem, but the variables are increased now. That means, you do not have uh, only freedom in x, you also have to cater for freedom in lambda actually. So, that is uh, kind of what is mathematically called as dualization of the problem. So, you are actually taking it to some sort of a higher dimensional problem because uh, lambda itself is not a constant vector, it is a time varying thing. So, you really need a 
differential equation for that and all. We will talk a little more on that as we go along actually, especially in the in the next lecture. But anyway, so the, the Lagrangian's theorem, Lagrange's existence theorem tells us that we, all that you have to do is to construct a J bar like that and then treat it as a free optimization problem in the form of uh, in the way free variables being x and lambda both actually. Okay. So, what do you do now? We define something like an L star which is L plus lambda transpose phi okay. and then we simply go back and tell okay, we will apply the EL, EL equations directly. We do not have to really keep on deriving the EL equation again and again okay, because we know this is a function of L star is a function of x, x dot, t and probably lambda also. So, let me there is a mistake here. Okay. It is a function of lambda as well okay. because L star is L star contains lambda actually okay. L lambda is here okay. L star contains lambda actually. Okay. So, the what you are doing here is uh, considering that and then applying the L equation to each sort of thing two two equation actually first is with respect to x variable and second is with respect to lambda variable. Okay. So, with re because you can always define something like a, okay, if you if you are not uh, comfortable with this uh, this idea there, then you can always define some other vector let us say some capital X which is actually x and lambda okay, with first is x variable and then next is the lambda variable and apply the EL equation with respect to the capital X. Okay. Then it is equivalent of uh, applying it twice with x and lambda separately because the Right, because by the definition, this will be like components of big X. Components of big X will be first contain X and then second contain lambda actually. So, it is as good as applying it or writing it separately basically. Okay. And also remember this equation what you are seeing L star does not contain any lambda dot expression. Okay. So, that because of that this uh, this partial derivative with respect to lambda dot happens to be 0. Okay. So, time derivative of that is also 0. Basically. So, so, that is how it, uh, it it leads to this del L by del L star by del lambda equal to 0 actually. Okay. About transversality conditions again same thing the there are two things here first is with respect to x and second is with respect to lambda and again because uh, lambda dot is not there. So, any any partial derivative with respect to lambda dot is 0. Okay. So, we essentially will end up with this uh, this kind of equation. Okay. First equation is uh, del del L star by del x minus d by dt of del L star by del x dot equal to zero, and the corresponding to that uh, that uh, what we call as I mean coasted equation in general. So del L star by del lambda equal to zero. Okay, and remember when you do this del L star by del lambda, okay, this uh, L star is like this. So del L star by del lambda is nothing but phi. So what you are telling is phi equal to zero, and that is nothing but that. Okay. So, the constant equation appears okay, again as a, as a set of necessary as a part of the necessary condition actually. So, the constant equation gets embedded into the part of the solution basically that way. All right, so, what you are doing here is uh, this kind of thing first is uh, with respect to x variable then with respect to lambda variable when you do this with respect to lambda variable our constant equation reappears actually same constant equation comes. Okay. So, this is uh, how it is. Uh, so, what you are doing looking at? We are looking at a problem with uh, some n dimension from x and n tilde dimension for from constant equation okay. and one freedom if your T f is free okay, it then one, one more freedom comes from T f actually. Okay. So, essentially we have, we have to have this boundary conditions for uh, this n plus n tilde plus 1 sort of thing that way. Okay, so, n conditions are, uh, are already there because uh, T x naught is fixed, okay, T naught x naught are kind of fixed. One the other things can be derived from here, okay, the transversality condition tells something like this. Okay. So, when you apply this, this leads to this, this n tilde equation sort of thing and then you have one more condition that L star of T f in delta T f equal to 0, but since T f is free, it leads to this L star T f equal to 0. Okay. So, you have this many freedoms and you also have equivalent boundary conditions sort of thing. So, we should be able to solve it actually. Okay. Okay. Uh, all right. So, then there is another class of constraint that uh, that pops up in many of our application problems. Okay. This uh, non holonomy constraints and all the dictionary they call. Okay. So, that means uh, this is what it is. Okay. This non-holonomy constraint appears in the form of state equation, 
there is also another class of constraint which case is called isoperimetric constraint. That means, we are not interested in a particular value per se of this particular uh, function, but we are interested in a, in an integral value of that function has to be equal to some some value k actually. Okay. How do what is an example? An example probably like uh, what I can think of is uh, suppose we are talking about a uh, let us say some sort of a uh, target uh, entry I mean ballistic missile guidance let us say. So, you, you have to have it here and the vehicle goes there and then it there is something somewhere there is a target there. So, that means, uh, this is the center of earth let us say then what you are looking for is this this angle. Okay. This angle is called something called range angle actually. Okay. So, what you are looking for is you have to guide this vehicle in this segment. Okay. This is your sub, suppose to guidance ends at, at the point of burnout. Okay. You guide it in such a way that it will follow the same trajectory that you are looking for. Okay. This okay. It will follow the same trajectory that you are looking for and ultimately it will end up the target. It equivalently it tells you that okay, this angle that is, that is getting covered that this range angle and all at the end okay, not not in the guidance segment not in the this, this t naught to t f for, for our guidance purpose can be ending here, but you extend that and then tell okay, after so much of time it will finally going to fall somewhere. Okay. So, in that particular thing I mean by that time whatever angle I covered has to be equal to some value. Basically. Then only I will, I, I my mean vehicle will be reaching there, otherwise it will be somewhere else actually. Okay. So, that is not acceptable. So, that kind, that kind of problem is called something like isoperimetric constraint and you can think of many different applications as well actually. Okay. This is just a small uh, I mean uh, example sort of thing. Okay. Okay. So, there, there are cases where it will which where it will appear uh, this kind of constraint. Now, how do we handle that? Okay. Because we have not talked about uh, anything about that so far basically. Now, if you are a little bit uh, I mean clever then you can think that okay, integral uh, is kind of an equi I mean counterpart of differentiation actually. So, then what I will do? I will, in, I will define x another kind of state equation state variable sort of thing or another free variable x n plus 1 which is not part of n. Okay, remember x contains x 1 to x n. So, I will define another variable x n plus 1 such that n plus x n plus 1 dot is nothing but that. Okay. So, what do I do? I mean, if I integrate it both sides from T naught to T f, what I am learning here because that this is by definition x n plus 1 dot is nothing but that and that is, is nothing but this constant equation basically. So, this this uh, integral of this x n plus 1 dot d t is nothing but equal to k, okay. but this one can be expanded now as x n plus 1 T f minus x n plus 1 T 0 equal to k. Okay. So, this this uh, the equation that you are looking for Okay, this particular equation okay, is actually two free variables and one equation. Right? I mean, we don't know. I mean, as long as the difference is k, then we are okay. okay. Because this appears as a, I mean, this non-holonomic constant sort of thing. So this constant is accounted for. Only the boundary condition sense we need something, and uh, we got it actually. But it happens to be like two free variables and one equation actually. So what do we do now? So, essentially the idea here is uh, you can choose one of these two and fix the other one okay. because anyway it is a free variable sort of thing okay. as long as the as long as this uh, differential equation is cons I mean satisfied then we are done anyway. The boundary condition does not matter that much as long as the difference happens to be k. So, you can uh, you can select one and fix other and whatever you are selecting can be interpreted as something like a tuning variable that means if you select a different value the results may be different and all that way. So, it happens to this, the one that you select happens to be a tuning parameter, the rest of the thing will go uh, as part of the equation actually. Okay. So, if you are not if you are not sure what value to select and all that uh, obviously an idea is select the x n plus 1 t 0 equal to 0 and then x n plus 1 t f will automatically become k. Now, that is just a guideline sort of thing. Actually. Okay. So, again I am emphasizing that because uh, many pro many practical problems you may end up with some constraint like this for the for the objective to be met actually. So, in those situation one idea is to define an additional free variable x n plus 1 and do this bring in this additional constraint equation in the form of non holonomic constraint actually. Okay. Associated boundary conditions will be derived from the constraint equation. So, what is the summary again? The summary is uh, the following additional non-anomic constraint is introduced okay, with the boundary condition like this. Okay. 
and again this 0 can be some other thing I mean if you, if you select some other number then this k plus that number will appear here actually and that happens to be a design I mean flexibility sort of thing actually. So, what is essentially done is the original problem is augmented with this information this this uh, constant equation with this boundary condition and then it is uh, attempted to I mean you attempt to solve this actually ok. Let us go for a small example problem now which will make our idea slightly more clear probably. Okay. So, this is a, a standard uh, very small uh, example problem I will encourage everybody to to solve it really using pen and paper basically yes. So, because these problems will get our ideas clear actually. What you are looking for? You are looking for minimizing a cost functional like this okay, a standard cost functional quadratic cost functional with x 1 of 0 equal to 1 and x 1 of 1 equal to 0 ok. Remember that ok and there is absolutely no constraint on x x 2 per se ok where the this equation is constrained this x 1 is further constrained by this differential equation x 1 dot is minus x 1 plus x 2 and x 1 boundary conditions are known to us actually ok. But we are more interested in minimizing this cost function. So, for a second if somebody is clever you can think of well x 2 of t it can be interpreted something like uh, control variable e of t ok. So, if x 2 of t happens to be control variable then it this is the way the control problems do appear actually. This will be something like x square plus e square ok. Well, let me do that probably ok. This is uh, this suppose I define x 1 is nothing but x and x 2 is something like u. So, then j this j will be nothing but 0 to 1 sorry 0 to zero to 1 ok x square plus u square into d t ok. Subject to ok x x dot equal to minus x plus u ok and then uh, boundary condition is x of 0 equal to 1 and uh, x of 1 equal to 0 ok. That means, uh, in a in a time thing if you talk about x you are talking about x of uh, 0 equal to 1. So, you have this 1 and, and x of uh, t equal to 1 somewhere here it has to be 0. I do not know how to, how it will develop the entire trajectory it may not be a straight line. So, it can develop whatever way it wants actually ok. Subject, so, it can develop whatever way it you like to have. Only condition is it has to optimize this cost function on the way. It it has to minimize this cost function actually. Okay. So this is if you interpret this this problem, what you're looking for here, it is actually the same problem is getting embedded in the form of this x one x two variable here actually. Okay. So in other words, we are trying to actually we are trying to solve an optimal control problem here in an indirect way actually. Okay. That is the message there and also remember this uh, this path that I put we do not know how it will look like right now ok. We will see uh, what whatever the equation pops up ok accordingly it will uh, it will evolve actually ok. But it has to satisfy the boundary condition that is uh, there is no compromise on that actually ok. So, that means x of uh, 0 has to be 1 x of 1 has to be 0 yeah, the, the other two conditions actually. And also remember uh, we are we are mainly interested in the interval 0 to 1 we are not interested anything beyond that. Uh, these are this uh, fixed final time problem sort of thing actually. Your initial time is fixed at 0 your final time is fixed at 1 ok. So, there is no variation of uh, those values actually and this uh, final initial value of the x is uh, 1 and the final value of x 1 is also 1 actually ok. So, that there is no freedom of that. So, you can think of uh, it is something like a fixed endpoint condition problem actually ok. All right. So, let us proceed further. So, what do you do actually? We will not worry about x and u and things like that we will confine our discussion with x 1 and x 2 because we have not even introduced an optimal control problem which we will do it in x class anyway. Well, I mean looking at this we will just go back to our EL equation and try to get an answer for this actually. So, what you are doing? There are two ways of doing that one uh, let us uh, follow method 1 first. Here I will be slightly clever I mean then it then ok I will look at this equation and I know everything uh, all the algebra that is necessary in the form of x 1 x 1 dot and all the that way. So, how about simply eliminating x 2 from here. So, I will I will eliminate try to eliminate x 2 ok 
and then x2 is nothing but x1 dot plus x1 okay and I, I go back and substitute that there one part is x1 so I will uh, x1 square so I will keep it x1 square as x1 square and x2 square okay is x2 is nothing but x1 dot plus x1 so I will substitute that x1 dot plus x1 square now it is a problem of purely in the form of x1 the x2 is gone actually and the x1 boundary conditions are also available so we will be able to solve it actually so, let us see how to do that so what is the EL equation EL equation tells us that this is true okay and also I mean there is a small mistake here this is both x1 and x1 here okay all right okay so we put this del l by del x1 minus d by dt of del l by del x1 dot equal to 1 I mean equal 0 then what you are doing here is something nothing but this uh, del l by del x1 okay the l is not is like this so the, what is del l by del x1 2 x1 from here and this is nothing but this uh, I mean this chain rule of derivation to apply then it turns out to be 2 into that and then partial derivative of del x1 by del x1 that is 1 actually okay. So, 2 x1 plus 2 of that minus d by dt of partial derivative with respect to x1 dot now. Now, when you do x1 dot then this one there again the coefficient is 1 so you will end up with that actually. Okay. So, when you do this partial derivative with respect to x1 dot do not consider x1 as, as dependent on that and all that they are two different quantities actually. Okay. So, we we end up with something like this equation. So, now it is time to simplify a little bit we simplify okay it turns out to be like this and essentially you can see that this is nothing but x1 double dot okay and this this guy cancel out okay this x1 dot and x1 dot cancels out here plus and minus. And I am left out with this uh, this differential equation, okay, x1 double dot minus 2x1 equal to 0, okay. So, this is rather easy to solve, I mean this is a linear equation sort of thing, second order linear equation, homogeneous. So, characteristic equation turns out to be lambda square minus 2 equal to 0 and then lambda equal to plus or minus root 2. So, x1 t is nothing but c1 times this plus a2 times the other one, okay. And x2 obviously we know because x2 we have already eliminated this is what it is the moment we know x1 okay we can always construct x2 from this this algebra x1 dot plus x1 okay because x1 is purely a function of time now. So, I can construct x2 very easy, easily rather. Now, what is the boundary condition boundary condition tells us that uh, these two boundary conditions x1 of 0 is 1 and x1 of 1 is 0. Okay, so x when you when you substitute t equal to zero, then e to the power zero is one anyway. So what is what it gives us? This is one equal to c one times one plus c two times one. So this is nothing but one equal to c one plus c two. So I'm putting that here. One equal to c one okay plus c two. This is embedded here. The second one is at t equal to one. Okay, that means when, when this coefficient will become e to the power root two and e to the power minus root two. Okay, that is what it will come here. Okay, that value will become zero. So, or if you are not comfortable, you can just write these equations again. So, this first equation leads to one equal to c one plus c two. The second equation leads to zero equal to c one e to the power root two of root two because root two times one. That's what it will turn out to be. Okay, so this is e to the power root two. Okay, plus c two e to the power minus root two. Okay, so the same these two equations are uh, are written uh, in a vector matrix form here. Okay. All right, so this is how it is, uh, and then uh, it's easy to compute c one c two. C one c two is uh, a inverse b sort of thing. Okay. So compute that, and you get it something like this. You can further simplify the algebra or you can stop here so computer will evaluate whatever it is actually what we got what is the value of c1 and c2. Okay. So, this is once you get the value of c1 c2 you are done because x1 of t happens to be like that and x2 will happen to be like that okay. you are done with that actually. So, this is one way of getting that actually okay. but it is not a very good way of doing that this method of elimination and all that okay. but for higher dimensional problems it may not be possible. So, we need to have a direct way of uh, doing it and things like that. Yeah. So, let us go to this uh, method 2 which we just studied that uh, Lagrange approach sort of thing. So, remember this is the constraint equation right this is the this is a cost function that I want to minimize uh, subject to this constraint equation. 
So, we can introduce this Lagrange variable and then introduce additional equation and all that actually. That is what we are going to here. So, L star is nothing but L plus lambda into that phi whatever phi is actually. Okay. So, this is this will end up like that. Now, we have real equations in three variables because x 1, x 2 and lambda. Okay. We have not eliminated x 2. So, x 2 happens to be a free variable also basically. Okay. Just that x 2 dot is not there and lambda dot is also not there. So, these two quantities will go to 0. Okay. So, what you are looking for is this equation and these two equation actually. Okay. Right. This, this L star will contain L plus lambda transpose f or transpose phi, but it is a single equation anyway. So, we do not need that transpose, it is a scalar equation and L is nothing but that, L is whatever comes inside the integral. Okay. So, this is this is how it is constructed, L is whatever comes inside the integral plus lambda times, in general it is lambda transpose times phi, but here it is a one scalar equation anyway. So, you take uh, lambda times phi, phi is nothing but that. Okay. This is by definition. Okay. Then when you start applying L equation, it is nothing but individual component wise we will apply. First we apply with respect to x 1, so del L star by del x 1 minus d by d t del L star by del x 1 dot equal to 0. Similarly, you replace with x 2 and then formulate this equation and that by lambda and formulate this equation. And it turns out that uh, there is in this L star there is no x 2 dot expression anywhere and there is no lambda dot expression anywhere either actually. Okay. So, that is the reason why these two becomes 0, okay, these two are gone. So, you will end up with this equation as well as these two equation that needs to be solved actually. Okay. So, what does it lead what does it lead to del L 1 del L star by del x 1 minus d y d t of this quantity. Okay. So, this will lead to this one this equation okay, let us uh, and then del L star by del x 2 will lead to that equation and then this uh, del L star by del lambda will lead to the same constant equation that you have seen before. Okay. Well, once you take out del lambda del L star by del lambda equal to 0 that means, this is equal to 0 this x 1 dot plus x 1 minus x 2 equal to 0 that is nothing but the constant equation that we started here. Okay. All right, So, this is how it will appear basically okay, this uh, algebra sense well it is very simple rather let us try to do something actually. So, L star is like that. So, del L star by del x 1 okay. Okay, if you look at that, that is nothing but 2 x 1 plus lambda actually, because 2 x 1 uh, from the first term and then lambda will come. Similarly, del L star by del x 1 dot, if you talk about, that is nothing but lambda basically. Okay. okay. So, you what you have here is 2 x 1, okay, this is 2 x 1. Okay. So, when you substitute this equation, these two, what you end up with 2 x 1 plus lambda okay, from the first one plus d by dt of lambda that is lambda dot equal to 0. Okay. That is what you are getting here. Okay. The very first equation that is 2 x 1 plus lambda from, from this side then the lambda dot from the second one actually that is equal to 0. Okay. Similarly, when you do the, this algebra of del L star by del x 2 then all that you are having is here 2 x 2. Okay, minus lambda. Okay, so that is 2x2 minus lambda equal to 0. And similarly, when you do this uh, other one, that is very straightforward. This equation is to be there. Uh, the, all the coefficient of lambda is to appear. And that nothing but the same constant equation. So, that's how we get it here. Actually. Okay. Now it is time to uh, time for us to solve these three equations. And these three equations can be solved. Okay, in variety of ways, obviously. And we can solve it uh, whatever way we want actually. Okay. Let us uh, follow a follow one approach where you can think okay, I can eliminate lambda from equation 1 b. Okay. So, I will eliminate that I get lambda equal to 2 x 2 okay. and x 2 is nothing but x 2 into x 1 I mean x 2 is nothing but x 1 dot plus x 1 here this equation. Okay. So, 2 and so now you can uh, you can go back and tell okay, I will use this equation 2 and 1 b. Okay gives me that kind of equation basically. Okay. Uh, <coughs> all right. Lambda lambda you have eliminated. Okay. So, what you are getting here lambda dot is nothing but the 2 x ok. Uh, well, I do not know 2 into 1 a probably. Yeah, I think this should be probably 1 a. Okay. 
just check it I mean you can do it yourself probably. Okay, if you if you use this now, what what have we done here? What have we done here? We have uh, eliminated the lambda from here, so we have e we used this equation one b in a way. Okay, and then when you x two, okay, the next two we have used this equation also, right? The, by putting this, okay, what you have not used is this equation actually. So this equation is substituted back, and you ultimately get lambda dot is nothing but two x one plus lambda. Okay. So, 2 x 1 plus lambda basically. Okay, so, substitute it here and get it actually. Yeah. Anyway, so, in any algebra is there you can I think it is not that hard to do it actually. Otherwise, uh, you, there is another way of looking at okay, let me let me correct myself also a little bit here. Okay, you do not do that let us say and uh, let us not worry about the, this algebra either actually. Okay. Yeah, let us not the, you forget this comment actually. Okay. So, what you what you can think about is uh, lambda is nothing but that. So, what is lambda dot here? Okay. Lambda dot if I just take a differentiation here is nothing but 2 x 1 double dot plus x 1 dot. Okay. So, this is uh, this is something like uh, I mean then you can think of uh, using whatever uh, you want to use basically and then you can try to simplify this actually. Okay. So, ultimately the point here is okay this uh, now lambda dot okay now you can use this this one way basically i mean uh, equation 1a and lambda dot is nothing but 2x1 plus lambda and then again the lambda is substituted like this and all that actually so you you play around with this this three equations okay after taking this derivative and then you will let land up with something like this okay so what you are getting here actually ultimately if you look at these two equation okay okay these two equation now your uh, two x one and two x one gets cancelled out. Okay, this two x one dot and uh, and two x one dot gets cancelled out. Okay. okay, so you are left uh, two is getting cancelled out anyway, basically. Okay, so you and then x one dot is gone basically. Okay. So what you are like what you are left out is something like x one double dot is nothing but two x one. Okay. Just look at this algebra. I mean, just have to. Cancel out the terms that are gone and just keep the remaining terms actually. Okay. okay, so two x one double dot will happen to be four x one, and hence x one double dot is nothing but two x one. Actually, okay. so this is what we what we got before as well, right? I mean, if you look at this equation before, okay, we landed up this equation anyway. X one double dot is two x one. Then we carried out the simplification. I mean, solution of that and all that. that way. So this is also similar thing. We landed up with this equation. Okay, so exactly same equation as before, and so we can proceed the same way. I don't have to do the further algebra actually. Okay. So finally, this expression turns out to be like this. Remember, we have solved so solved this equation that way. C one C two is also available as numbers basically. So finally, we have this x one is that, and x two is nothing but x one dot plus x one. So I carry out the algebra that is necessary for this x one dot, and then may, then add. At the same expression x1 again basically. Okay. So, we will end up with something like this. So, that is how you get a solution basically. So, as I told before, if you consider x2 of t as nothing but u of t, uh, that is a control variable rather, then in the process what you have done is actually we have solved an optimal control problem already basically. Okay. So, this is uh, not as simple as that, but we want generality, generalization, and then more powerful things and things like that, but this will also give you. A some sort of a connection between calculus of variation and optimal control problem. Actually, that's the that's the motivation of having this example here. Actually, okay. So this is uh, this is the what we are gearing up towards uh, that in the next class. But before the before going to the next class, our main uh, I mean our main objective in the entire course is to lead towards this optimal control and estimation concept sort of thing. So this is uh, again I thought I'll just put a few few words about about the optimal control problem per se. We discussed that before actually anyway. So, variety of optimal control problems can be thought about putting it something like this that you our objective is to find an admissible history of control variable now ok that is primarily more important what you have which will uh, cause these three things. First it should cause the system governed by this uh, this differential equation now it is a steady equation ok it is uh, the whatever uh, you take the solution u of t and substitute it here and kind of solve this uh, this equation either close form or numerical whatever way whatever resulting x of t will get is called straight trajectory 
and that straight trajectory should be admissible actually. Okay, it should not const violate any constraint on the straight trajectory. Okay. So, the objective here is to find an admissible time history of the control variable in the segment in order to T f such that it causes the system governed by this differential equation to follow an admissible trajectory. On the way, it should also optimize that is minimize or maximize a meaningful, meaningful cost function and then it should also satisfy this uh, system's uh, boundary condition actually, whatever boundary condition you want to impose, right. Either it can be position constraint or it can be time constraint or whatever you want to do in the final thing, it should satisfy that as well. And on the way, it should satisfy this uh, this cost function, okay, which contains partly the path uh, con path dependent cost and the final boundary condition cost sort of thing. Okay. And uh, discuss about this also, but let me quickly summarize it again. Okay. Now, this cost function that you are looking at is kindly kind of fairly generic. It can embed various class of problems actually. Okay. First thing we discussed before is how do you talk about minimization of uh, something like operational time, okay. The time taken from reaching a part goal point from starting from, from a given point so that is your minimum time missile guidance you can think about that problem actually, okay. So, then uh, in this in this framework you can think this is 0 and this is 1, okay. Then it will lead to that. So, phi is 0 and 1. So, that is nothing but integration of 1 dt is nothing but T f, t f minus t 0 that is what you want to minimize. So, if you take phi equal 0 and L equal to 1, you essentially end up with a minimum time problem sort of thing. Then minimization of the control variable, if you talk about that, uh, then it is u transpose r u, that means uh, r 1 times uh, u 1 square r plus r 2 times u 2 square like that. If r is a diagonal matrix of r 1, r 2 and all that, then you have this uh, cost function which contains these terms half of uh, this uh, r 1 u 1 square plus r 2 u 2 square and all that. And each of the entries being positive thing, it will lead to something like a positive definite function basically. Okay. So, you want to minimize that, okay. then you will ultimately end up with minimum control effort. Similarly, if you talk about, okay, in other words, if you talk about this, then again still phi is 0 in this thing and L happens to be this, this function actually. Okay. Similarly, if you have a minimum deviation from the state, uh, minimum deviation of state from a fixed value C with minimum control effort. I talked about that as a kind of a helicopter hovering problem and all that. Then, uh, well, it is x minus c is the error that you want to minimize. So, x minus c transpose q times x minus c is one term where the error error of x with respect to c gets minimized. And then you have u transpose r u where the control gets minimized on the process itself. Okay. So, so what you are having? You are still having this phi equal to zero and l equal to all these things inside, and along with that half is there. Typically, half is also, I mean, this half does not play a major role, but that actually helps us to simplify the algebra later. Okay. Many of these, uh, as you see, these EL equations and all will talk about uh, derivatives. Okay. When you take derivatives or partial derivatives rather, then this half term, because these are quadratic terms, having a half term is half and 2 will go. So, we do not have to carry this, this number 2 all the way, and it does not really impli, I mean, affect the quality of the solution. I mean, the solution where it is supposed to lie j and half of j will have the solution at the same point that is more important actually. What you are looking for is the is the solution of the trajectory itself. Okay. So, that means, j or half j minimization is one and the same for us actually. Okay. Then, uh, different examples if you want to minimize the deviation of state from origin with minimum control effort and you can think of this delta x and delta u then it is nothing but regulator problem actually this variable instead of some in instead of x it is consider that as delta x delta x being some deviation with respect to some known trajectory sort of thing and similarly the deviation of control delta u then this cost function happens to be a regulator problem actually so what you are looking for is phi is 0 and l happens to be like that but what about uh, this this kind of a function where you minimize the control effort on the way but we don't worry about minimization of the states on the way but you worry about reaching a final goal point c Okay. So, that means, x minus c happens to be at end actually. Okay. So, then you would think of minimizing this kind of a cost function where phi happens to be like this, not 0 anymore and L happens to be like that actually. Okay. So, these are the class of problems that you talk of various class of problems that you can embed within this uh, this generic cost function sort of thing. That does not mean you have to confine yourself within this class all the time, it, you can think about your own cost function as well actually. Okay. And then along with this cost function, we have to have this boundary condition and as I told before, this boundary conditions happens to be either fixed end point, pre end point, a variety class and things like that. 
So, this will embed is an optimal control problem and very quickly in the next class we will see how do we take advantage of this calculus of variation to solve this optimal control problem where we lead to actually. All that that is all in this particular lecture. Thank you.